Local government chairman. Local, thank you, admin. Uh, the call is now being recorded. Uh, my host for this evening happens to be the secretary of the committee of chairmen. I'm talking about no other person than engineer Ojo Duke. Um, engineer Ojo Duke will, will take it up from here to give us a preamble to the discussion this afternoon, very shortly. And of course, we'll be inviting after that our honorable guest, the deputy national uh deputy chairman of the labor party uh comrade i comrade are your alone femi over to you co-host engineer duke thank you very much indeed comrade uh are you call it we call you fondly call you ay thank you very much distinguished comrade we really appreciate your tenacity and your contribution to the movement thus far. You have been consistent as an obedient. So also every other person on this call, you are here because you appreciate the obedient spirit and you want to be identified with the new Nigeria that we are all clamoring for. This evening, the conversation is taking another level we are looking at the role of political institutions in strengthening democratic processes in nigeria and our focal lens will be on our party itself the labor party what role can labor party play in strengthening democratic processes in nigeria of course many of us are aware of how we came to this point as a party coming before the elections, during the elections, and even now after the elections, how across the country we've been trying to battle some unscrupulous elements who had perfected the act of selling off the party and every other unscrupulous things that they did before the elections that are now showcasing itself after the elections. We are here to discuss how to prevent such occurrences going forward how to ensure that leaders of capacity and competence take positions of leadership, how to ensure that we don't find ourselves in similar troubled waters in time to come. This is what we hope to discuss today and has I've been introduced earlier on. We have joined us this evening to help X-ray this particular, this particular topic in person of the National Deputy Chairman doctor, and uh, AY also included comrade in his name, Lauren Femi. Thank you very much, doctor, for joining us um, this evening. After this preamble, I will um, hand over back to AY, Ayo, to help, you know, direct the questions so that we can keep the conversations going. Thank you very much, AY. Thank you so much, um, comrade. Ojo Duke, engineer comrade Ojo Duke. Thank you so much for that introduction. Um, we must also uh, be able to tell ourselves where we are coming from and, of course, where we are probably heading. Where we are heading. If you agree with me, you, you people that have followed the Labour Party, you understand uh, why, indeed, we need to be discussing our role in um, in helping the democratic uh, processes in this country, strengthening it and, of course, uh, bettering it to what we currently have. If you remember our experience prior to the elections, um, where we all, uh, especially the new people, almost walked in into a cabal. That, that, that were set in the party and um, who also connived with uh, the institution that was supposed to be the umpire, uh, the INEC, to deny um, Nigerian citizens who wanted to serve their people. Uh, because we in Labour Party had uh, a, a primary where INEC were duly present uh, made an observational report commending the peaceful process 
naming the um, candidates that emerged in their report. But yet, INEC made sure that the candidates did not feature on the ballot. So you, you, you see reasons why we are bringing up this topic about institutionalizing um, a quality a democratic process. And that is why we are saying, okay, we may not be able uh, to call INEC to order, but of course, uh, we know what they did. But again, we now look back and look at the party, what they also did with the party. And that is why it is essential for us to have this discussion with people that are the aims of affairs at the national of the party to, to begin to let's have a reflection on this we had in a where you want to serve your fatherland you have fulfilled all righteousness um in, in you have fulfilled all right all the necessary uh forms you filled everything you've done the due diligence from your side as a candidate and i make in connivance with some people in the party who happen to be uh, the ones that are supposed to uh, be be charged with the responsibility of uh, taking uh, the process from primaries to um, enlisting on Nyad Porter and along the line they mismanaged this whole process uh, because the political party uh, was not in its right frame at that time they managed to have their way and at the end uh, at the elections our candidates were not on the ballot so to, to of course to stop this from happening again we need to reflect on that and of course have lessons and understanding from the perspective of uh, people that are even more knowledgeable um, in the process than us. And that happens to be uh, senior colleague, senior comrade, uh, national deputy chairman of Labour Party, uh, Dr. Ayo Olorun Femi. Uh, this afternoon, we'll be shedding more light on this for us. We, it's all about learning. It's all about uh, coming together to have um, a, an objective in mind. We want a better Nigeria. We want a better uh, managed political party. And of course, we want uh, better people uh, to be at the ends of leadership. Evening, sir. Good Doctor Ayo Lord Femi. Over Good to evening. you. Good evening, sir. Yes, I am most delighted to be here today uh, on this very important uh, occasion uh, of uh, discussing the way forward uh, with respect to not just our party, but uh, the country as a whole. Uh, you will agree with me that uh, Nigerians are not, uh, are not, they are not happy. Uh, things are not as, uh, things are not easy. Uh, the dividend of democracy is not there. Um, what we can see is uh, agony and agonizing. And I thank, I thank you for bringing this platform for the purpose of uh, uh, stopping our agonizing and begin to organize. Um, from the topic, let me, by way, or oh, for the introduction, thank the organizers of uh, this program uh, for the minute feet to bring all of us together to share our views concerning uh, this contemporary political narrative, whether they are palatable or not. It's a different ballgame. Um, you agree with me that uh, political parties in Nigeria uh, remain beset by corrupt practices and do not consistently reflect the priorities of the Nigerian people. Recognizing that a strong multi-party system is essential to democratic uh, development. Um, way back uh, 1912, there have been that struggle, first to, for the actualization of the MKO uh, mandate. And uh, you know what that, uh, that meant? to some of us for struggle, 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 and struggle. A lot of people died. Um, and by 1998, 
um, we started uh, regrouping ourselves one way or the other. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, there was uh, the first so-called peaceful transfer of power from uh, uh, the military to the People's Democratic Party. And uh, in 2015, um, we all know how uh, APC came to power. Uh, people will say, yes, there was a peaceful transition from PDP to APC. That was the last of uh, the peaceful and uh, democratic election uh, we can say we had in Nigeria. In any case, uh, those things that happened between 2011 to 2015 is a topic for another day because you know the propaganda that went on and on and on. And uh, you recall that uh, our party, Labour Party, was having Mimiko, Governor Mimiko, as a governor of Ondo State. And uh, he worked with a template which they made the Labour Party, the political party, the uh, to beat in Nigeria, you know, given the record of achievement of that government in the, of that party in Ondo State. Now, the movement to uh, APC in 2015 created a lot of problem within the political party. As uh, there was a sharp division between um, those who are supporting uh, uh, Buhari and uh, those who wanted, wanted to support uh, uh, Jonathan. You recall that at that time, um, Labour Party was just a one state party. And uh, the leader, the ownership of the Labour Party, which uh, reside with NSC and TUC, was fully in the hand of Adam Soshomole at that time. And uh, because Adam Soshomole was more of, uh, I mean, of course, APC, uh, unlike uh, Miko, who uh, used the platform of uh, Labour Party to win election and remain there, Adam Oshomole used the connection of Labour Party and Labour Movement to win election under ACN and later APC and never came back to Labour Party. And Labour Party from that moment became a transactional political party. Um, it has not been in Huru since then. It has been from one crisis to another, one crisis to another. Uh, before I go into all those uh, uh, specific uh, crises and how we can resolve them. Let me quickly take us again back to the historical development uh, of parties in Nigeria. Um, maybe uh, we may just look at uh, what we have today and uh, connect them to uh, the various, I mean, the tumultuous uh, political history. Uh, which has since become very complex, uh, as dominated by APC and PDP today. Uh, the oldest parties are not uh, just APC, PDP. Of course, you know APC is a, is a party that came up uh, between 2013, 2014, and uh, they came and a uh, kind of uh, merger took place and they won election. But PDP has always been here, and uh, recall that the uh, Labour Party is not a new party at all. It's one of the oldest parties in Nigeria because it came, it came, it came alive in 2002. So uh, we cannot also uh, remove the role of the Nigerian youth movement, you know, and the nationalist uh, movement in the colonial Nigeria uh, in terms of their participation, uh, both in colonial legislative body as a pathway to greater uh, autonomy for the territory. However, these parties were primarily uh, represented and populated by elite class, focused mostly in the South. I'm talking about uh, the colonial era now. The tripartition of uh, Nigeria into Northern, Western, and Eastern regions under the 1945 constitution gave rise to ethno-regional uh, ethno these political parties. Of course, deepening ethnic politics and the uh, excavating tensions and conflicts along tribal and regional lines. Um, that also took us to the period of military rule 
that inter interrupted democratic governance uh, in 1966, 1983, and 1993. Uh, all of these further restricted the development of political parties to the, uh, of course, uh, to be able to represent and engage citizens. While the major parties that dominated uh, or dominates Nigerian politics have changed the foundations of the ethno-religious party system uh, remain in place. Uh, is, uh, they, 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 you will agree with me that uh, except we want to deceive ourselves, uh, then no matter the political uh, party that you put in place now, uh, it is easily traceable to one ethnic or religious group, just as we, 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 we experienced during the last uh, presidential or general election, whereby people attempted to, uh, by way of uh, blackmail and all of that, uh, try to categorize Labour Party as uh, the party for the for the Igbos. All right, uh, the 1979 constitution introduced stringent measures for party formations and regulation to promote a national outlook in party activities and increase the spread of party membership across the country. The two party system introduced in 1991 brought about public financing of uh, parties with the aim of limiting the excessive influence of funders. Of course, a 2002 Supreme Court ruling liberalized registration of political parties, leading to a surge of new parties. That was when Labour Party came on board. The number of political parties registered in Nigeria jumped from three in 1993 to 91 in 2019, creating immense challenges for regulation and management of party activities and processes. You recall that uh, uh, shortly before uh, the immediately after the 2019 election, uh, INEC also reduced the number of uh, political parties based on certain uh, criteria. So today, the dominant political parties are PDP, which held uh, the presidency, a majority of the seat on the National Assembly between 1999 to 2015. Then we have APC, which, formed, uh, which was formed in 2013 out of three of opposition parties. And they won presidency um, in 2015, and they are still there. Uh, whether they have been able to move us forward, the, the question, I mean, the answer is glaring before the force. Okay. Um, you see, one of the major challenge in all this historical background is the fact that uh, rather than acting as platform for specific ideologies or issue, today's political parties are primarily, primarily used by Nigerian elites to gain political power and influence. Defections are commonplace, particularly ahead of elections as politicians jockey for the best platform to secure victory. This phenomenon has been particularly evident as rival APC leaders with presidential aspiration have struggled to exert control over national leadership of the party. You see, you will see skirmishes and schisms. This reality also played out at state level. You recall, in preparation to the Edo state gubernatorial election, uh, uh, we saw Ozage Ize Yamu, who decamped from uh, PDP to APC, and uh, Godwin Obaseki swapped and left APC for PDP. You know, all of this is a clear manifestation of lack of ideology by uh, our political parties and the, uh, the, the politicians in Nigeria. Uh, everybody, most politicians are just looking for how get uh, uh, get uh, utilize any of the available political parties, especially the one they are sure will give them ticket and uh, the one that they believe has all the structure. Well, you will agree with me that the uh, Liberal Party over time, I mean, in recent times, has been able to prove some of this thing wrong. Uh, Peter O.B., who was in PDP, discovered that he can no longer be uh, in that class 
even though his ideology, according to uh, the observation of many, is still tailored towards the capitalist uh, uh, orientation. However, uh, there's what they call, we call acculturation. His lifestyle does not reflect a capitalist lifestyle. He may be a multi-billionaire. Being a socialist does not uh, uh, include you or uh, deny you the opportunity of uh, becoming what God wants you to be. Uh, but in terms of lifestyle and your worldview, uh, you will agree with me that Peter will be actually belong to the same ideology that liberal stand for. So now, uh, when we take a costly look at uh, what transpired during the 2023 uh, election, you also agree with me that uh, when Obi came into the party, a lot of people also moved from uh, PDP to join us at the Labour Party. And that, of course, in itself created another problem because uh, class distinction, ideological differences also came in. Meanwhile, at the point that uh, some group of people within the labor movement were thinking of how to uh, stop marching on the streets and uh, acquire political power so that we can utilize it to suit the purpose uh, for which uh, political parties are created. Uh, Peter Obi came, and uh, rather than some of them uh, seeing it as an opportunity, they saw it as uh, a threat. They saw it as straight and uh, some of them pulled back. I remember that uh, I organized a political summit uh, under the canopy of uh, trade union, I mean, trade union Congress. And we, NSC also did the same thing where we brought all the principal actors within the labor movement, uh, development uh, agencies, I mean, development partners, you know, international friends, and uh, activists were brought together uh, to, to discuss the way we are discussing now, uh, with a view to charting uh, a course. And it was as a result of that that Labour Party uh, came together in unity uh, by reconciling. You, re you recall that there uh, were you know, several court cases, you know, uh, disorganized system, as a result of uh, some people who saw Labour Party as the only means through which they can survive. They were holding on to power, and um, that also created a problem. The NSC wanted this power at all, I mean, wanted the party back at all costs. Uh, TUC is standing in between how to mediate and uh, uh, ensure that uh, uh, we were able to uh, meet at the middle of the road. And uh, particularly, uh, the national chairman of the party uh, showed a lot of capacity and uh, the readiness and willingness to move us to the next level. And uh, I personally didn't see any reason why NSC should attempt to, to remove him at that time, but rather uh, we should uh, build our forces behind him to take us to the next level. And uh, well, whether we like it or not, we have gotten to that next level. And what we do with that level is what is most important to us now. And that is why uh, this, this lecture, I mean, this uh, meeting, this conversation is very, very, very important. Political parties are critical to democratic governance. Of course, it links citizens and government and acting as a platform for citizens to influence government important function of political parties in, democrat, in, in, the, in a democracy include promoting the interests of their members, gaining and maintaining power within the government, and proposing policy options. Political parties are most effective when they bring together like-minded citizens with common political preference and goal. So we, 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 we are not expected to just continue to agonize um, we have a government now uh, in place which uh, may not be accepted, which may not uh, represent the true uh, wish of the people, but in one way or the other, they have uh, put themselves there until we are able to gain access and uh, send them to where they came from. We just have to uh, provide our, I mean, uh, provide our own, uh, uh, our own services, our role play our own role. 
uh, in ensuring that uh, uh, we, 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 we propose alternative to the bad water they are giving us. Yes, they are giving us bad water. They are giving us uh, polluted air. We should be able to also prefer probable solution. How do we get uh, the poor to truly breathe? And how do we get clean water to drink uh, so that we don't uh, get deceased? Uh, we have a very, very, very vital role to play in that we don't have to keep quiet. Even while we are fighting in the court, we should be putting this government on their toes in ensuring that uh, the dividend of democracy uh, gets to get to the people. Um, the 2023 general election in itself is a reflection of uh, the, uh, the challenges uh, facing the country. Uh, you will see uh, the kind of uh, policy somersault. Even when the INEC came to say that this is my, or these are my guidelines. This is how we are going to transmit a result. Uh, apart from what we have in the Electoral Act, uh, people who are not sure of what INEC was planning to do, and maybe because information also reached the Nigerian people that INEC was planning a different thing. And that went, you know, viral. INEC came out and issued circular to Nigerians as to how exactly they were going to uh, transmit the election results. Uh, unfortunately, while the election was going on, while the, uh, the counting and everything are going on, the result of uh, the legislature, the Senate and the Rep, which took place the same day with the, with the, pres uh, with, uh, the presidential election, were being transmitted real time online. But that of the president that was first counted or that was counted along these three other ones were not transmitted. It therefore means that something went wrong somewhere. Not that uh, technically we can't, they, they, talk, they talk about technical glitch. If, they, if there was technical glitch, why is it that only it, the technical glitch only affected the presidential election? So it is obvious that uh, the mandate of Labour Party was stolen. And uh, how to recover it is what has been going on at what well, nice battle that we have been fighting. And I pray uh, all eyes on judiciary. We pray that uh, the judiciary will have the courage to do the needful uh, in this circumstance. So we, we there's hope. Nigerians are aware. And uh, the Labour Party should not go to sleep. This is not the time for us to go to sleep. This is time for us to, to beef up our activities, continue to mobilize, continue to organize. You can see that uh, uh, the government uh, has given us a grip now. Uh, it's not just grip, it's so sour that uh, uh, we cannot swallow it. The first subsidy has been removed. I don't know why somebody will say because there is a corruption in the, uh, in the administration of subsidy. Therefore, you remove the subsidy. It, says, it just simply express the failure of government or the fact that those who are in government currently or and those who are in the government before were the one engaging in this fraud. And therefore, rather than probing and uh, identifying those who are involved in this fraud, they would rather say, okay, we don't want to do it again because we have too much money now. That is exactly what so removal of subsidy means to me. That, okay, we have made a lot of money. We cannot be poor again. Therefore, we want to stop subsidy. That is the trait the attitude of an African man. Yes, they want to be the one controlling us and they have to take economic power from us and also add political power to it so that they will continue to, uh, to, to, continue to exploit us. So we have a very vital role to play as a, a party that is known for what we are, that uh, we are a socialist oriented party. And we should continue to resist anything that has to do with uh, uh, anything that will create more problem, hardship for Nigerian citizens. We should continue to move and rise against them. Yeah, they said that Peter B also agreed that uh, he was going to remove subsidy. What he has told you that, yes, I'm not going to do it the same way you have done it. 
the most important thing is to remove the fraud that is that subsidy and ensure that the subsidy actually get to the people. Okay, if you remove subsidy the way you have removed it, and you have dedicated petrol stations for commercial vehicles, and you have, you know, uh, uh, luxurious buses and the short shuttle buses that are released to the common men in various towns and cities uh, for their to ease their transportation. If you ensure that the rail system is working perfectly, if you ensure that the security of lives and property, nobody will complain. At least, if I want to go out minimally with, uh, you know, I should be able to go out the, within the trek within the, uh, one or 500 meters and get a transport that will take me to wherever I'm going, like it is done in civilized uh, society. But in our case, you can see with the removed subsidy now, productivity has reduced tremendously because some people cannot go to work six times a day. They are now going to work three times in a day, three times in a week, instead of uh, six times in a week or five times in a week. They now go to work two times or three times in a week. Of course, it will affect productivity. So, uh, comrades, uh, let me leave that one and go to straight to the last point that uh, the moderator raised concerning those who are in the party and uh, they, they are not working for the party, they are working for their own selfish interest. Yes, uh, some of them may be working for the ruling party, no doubt, but the truth is that even the ruling party cannot trust them. That is their business. That is their trade. That is what they know how to do. They have been in the party for many years and they have been transacting business. So to stop them now is difficult. And because we have been able to stop them, that is why they are doing everything they are doing. You can imagine in the entire Southwest, we don't have candidates. And candidates were available between the legal, the former legal advisor and the uh, uh, Arabambi, they messed up the whole system, collected money from people, from candidates here and there, and refused to give them the ticket. Deceived them that they were going to court, the court they never attended to. So that at, such that at the end of the day, when the election was going to hold, the, the maybe connivance, like uh, you have said, rightly pointed out, with uh, the electoral umpire, our names were not there in the ballot. For instance, in the entire Ondo state, I was the only candidate for the election. The only senatorial candidate. No rep, no other senate. And that just because these two guys manipul manipulated the candidates, collected their money, and uh, left, them, left them in the cold. So such people will, not, will no longer be tolerated in the party. And uh, as the party is now, it's self purging And the purging is still going on. The purging is, is still going on. If I'm found wanting tomorrow, I should be removed. I should be removed. We must all agree to this, that whoever does not believe in this, our ideology, our principle, what we stand for, you have a different agenda, you are caught, you should go. You should go. There's no two way about it. So comrades, uh, I know we have a li very limited time. We still have opportunity. But let me quickly uh, go to my recommendation here. I'll just put, uh, put in just two points here. Number one, we need to increase our accountability. As a political party, we must be accountable. We must be accountable. We should do things in the open. Every, our processes must be redesigned. You know, our processes must be well documented. And it's something they call business process. It must be known by everybody. That yes, when this situation happened, these are the things that we are supposed to do. These are the things that were supposed to do. All of those things documented. Apart from what we have in the constitution, we should have administrative processes that are clearly known to everybody. And we must be accountable to our followers at various levels. Number two, we need capacity building. A lot of people are in the political party holding positions, but they have not been trained. And we cannot give what we don't have. So we need to embark on capacity building uh, for all our members and even the potential members. Number three, we must organize and organize and organize. 
we must continue to organize. And uh, as much as possible, we must close all legal loopholes. We must close every legal loopholes. Uh, the political parties in Nigeria are taking advantage, especially the stronger ones, are taking advantage of uh, uh, the weaknesses in Nigerian legal framework for elections. So there's the need for us to close the loopholes in our uh, in our various laws, particularly the electoral laws. We need to improve on them in such a manner that uh, there will be no loopholes. As much as possible, let's close the loophole, loop, loop, loopholes uh, as much as we can. Um, the issue of INEC and security forces uh, must fulfill their mandate to punish perpetrators to increase it's arrest and even... It's and Anibal. Hello? Shamina Mina, eh eh, waka waka. Eh eh, Shamina Alamaragode, Ascend the Africa, Shamina Mina, eh eh, waka waka. Eh eh, Shamina Sanazana Zureva, Ascend the Africa. And we go to Ashley, I Shamina. Hello? Yeah, sorry, sir. We want to mute. I said no Shamina mina. Eh, eh, waka waka. Okay. I hope we are still here. Shamina, I know that I said no. The fellow is here to disturb. Admin, please remove the fellow. Eh, eh, Shamina, I know that I said no. I said no. I said no. Um, sorry, sir. We need to remove that fellow. Okay. Admin. Yeah. Possibly, yeah. he's not happy with the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Deliberately, they are here to do yeah. to the job. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, yeah. So, um, we oh. need to, uh, they, they, we need to, we, okay, it, the fourth recommendation is that INEC and security forces must fulfill their mandate to punish perpetrators through increased arrest, investigations, prosecutions, and their suspension. Uh, in addition, political parties must use their inter internal accountability mechanism. To hold members accountable. Contain prohibition and electoral law and guidelines. And uh, so I want to thank you very much for this opportunity for us to interact together. We will be, I, I believe there will be so many other opportunities for us to continue to dialogue in this manner. Uh, thank you for your attention. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much uh, indeed, Dr. Lufemi. Um, you have um, you have proceeded very, very strong. Um, Hello. You That's have given us. Hello. Hello. May I request the admin of the call to remove these uh, individuals? It doesn't appear Hello. that. Hello. <laughs> Can they remove them, please? Add me. Thank you. These are uh, deliberate acts. Okay. Um, let me just quickly touch on some of the points you raised. You gave us a very, uh, a very comprehensive background into how we evolved as a nation politically, and uh, you touched on um, how much of a socialist uh, orientation Labour Party has, and for this reason, we stand to resist whatever is not um, in tandem with citizens' welfare, especially uh, with the recent activities of the government with respect to the suspension of the subsidy and how it had impacted, uh, you know, uh, very badly on the life of the citizenry. You know, and then we, we also, you know, concentrated on the happenings in our party, Labour Party, uh, recently where you mentioned the, how the activities of the likes of Arabambi and his goons had affected us to the extent that in the entire of Southwest, we, we only had very limited candidates. Of course, a uh, majority of the candidates got extorted. They got their money and they exchanged their tickets uh, you know, for trade. And that uh, currently what we're experiencing in the party that has even exposed them the more uh, is an act of self purging I believe, occasioned by the introduction of new members, especially the youths. And now, um, a lot of them 
they now have their their hidden secrets made open and that is the reason why we are having so much issues in the party right now i believe it is for the good and the personal note i believe that because eventually all of them as you have said will be purged out and the party is currently in a state of uh, self purging you also mentioned one very striking thing uh, you know which i believe can only come from a sincere heart that even if you yourself were to be found wanting you know tomorrow that you should be removed i mean that is a very audacious um, comment only a true leader will will mention that and then going forward you made some very strong recommendations one of them is that uh, the party should increase its accountability you know the the processes governing the party should be redesigned uh, well documented something that can be reproducible that everyone can see and follow not uh, the ones that are hidden and shrouded in secrecy uh, that people would not know what actually is happening there and then uh, secondly you mentioned the issue of capacity building as many of the leaders and party members alike uh, not even uh, you know educated politically as they ought to so training of our members you said and leaders are very important and then thirdly you emphasize on the need for us to continue to organize ourselves organize and organize and very most importantly close all legal uh, loopholes that we have that uh, the political all the political parties are taking advantage of very very uh, comprehensive um, you know a contribution there that you have given us more like a whole lecture thank you very much sir we appreciate um while we await uh, do we have the co-host here uh, is i around okay so while we await while we uh, let's let's get to the house and get some questions or uh perhaps uh, one or two persons right there so i think we, let's just take about two to three questions for now directed at uh, our guest tonight after which we'll take the conversation to another level by you know concentrating on some aspects of what he has mentioned himself so if you want to ask the guests a question our guest once again is the deputy national chairman for the labor party dr uh Alon femi himself so if you have any questions please feel free raise your hands i will invite you to uh, to ask your questions so do we have anyone there please raise your hands you have a question to to ask him thank you anyone there wanting to ask question okay so let me just let me just uh, okay someone has their hand raised uh, mr uh come unique at the bio is your hand still raised at the bio all right please uh, unmute yourself and uh, ask your question mr de bio please thank you all right thank you very very much thank you sir uh resource person i really appreciate this uh, moment. Uh, thank you to the organizers. I say thank you once again. Uh, to make it short, Sam, my question is we all know that Arab and B has been doing this kind of uh, trade policies here and there all the time. Uh, I just want to ask, Sam, uh, what are the national body, what are they been, what, what, what have they been doing concerning this very Arab and B and its people? Can't he be expelled totally by the national body? Because I believe as a as, as an ex school at the national level, maybe they will need to have next meeting or national working committee meeting or something for him to be expelled totally. So can't he be expelled all this why? That's that's my question, sir. 
Okay. Uh, as we speak, Alabambi stands expelled. He has been expelled as far back as uh, it was the recommendation for his expulsion uh, happened in uh, in Akure, I think about uh, seven years ago. Uh, but uh, the, the the national chairman, you know, in his own uh, prerogative of uh, Messi administration, he decided to see whether the man would change. And unfortunately, he didn't change. So he was expelled during the last neck. He was expelled during the neck in Asaba. While, uh, while uh, the likes of uh, Apapa, uh, Daramola, and uh, uh, the former Southeast, I mean, South South uh, uh, National Vice Chairman were suspended. Uh, they were they were they were found wanting of collecting money from a uh, opposition party and uh, you know uh, creating problem in the party uh, they have one or two offenses levied against them and uh, to crown it all uh, they try to hijack power from the back from the backyard uh, which is not possible and uh, at the neck that took place uh, this year in Nasaba, they were all expelled. I mean, they were all suspended, but Arabambi has been expelled. Okay, uh, thank you very much. <clears throat> thank you very much, sir. As a follow up question to this, uh, we all know the role that Arabambi played, as you have also elucidated, how the role he played in conjunction with the legal advice. I'm going to call you shortly. Uh, um, Honorable Kendi Shogunle. So we all know the role that he played, leading to uh, most of our candidates being disenfranchised of their of their ticket. Now he's currently going around in some election petition tribunals, uh, having been expelled from the party, now working in tandem with the opposition to ensure that some of these are candidates, in some cases where they won elections. Uh, you know, losing their ticket based on his testimony, whatever the testimonies were, you know, or, or possibly some of the loopholes he left while filing their candidacy. And the opposition is taking advantage of this loophole to ensure that uh, these candidates, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, don't win at the at the high court, uh, you know, election petition tribunal, with their hope hanging on the appeal court and subsequently at the Supreme Court now. Uh, how how effective do you think his role now that he has been expelled, you know, will be for the fate of these candidates, sir? Thank you very much. Uh, first and foremost, I want to assure you that the only candidate that lost, that not lost, that was uh, pro proclaimed, I mean, or declare. Uh, uh, whose uh, ticket or whose uh, election has been nullified by the tribunal, I can assure you that the Labour Party will not lose that seat. We are going to get that seat. Yes, you are very correct. A lot of loopholes created by the legal advisor for the purpose, for, for the purpose of transaction. We recognize this. And that, is, that, that, that informed the reason why I mentioned the fact that uh, this party before now was transactional. But now it's no longer business as usual. Uh, we are working around the clock to see how the issue of uh, our job federal, uh, uh, federal constituency can be can be resolved. Uh, the next phase of the of the legal battle uh, is being worked upon and we are going to close all the gap and our candidates will still emerge. Okay, we, we have a strategy along that line. I can't disclose that now, but the rest are sure that uh, that federal constituency in uh, Lagos, we are going to get it back. We are going to get it. Our candidate, our Labour Party will be on that seat. Okay. But sir, uh, as it stands, uh, the candidate is still still stands elected, right? Yes. Oh, on the okay. court. But uh, on uh, in assuring you that that loophole that they have created will not work in this case, I have just told you that Labour Party will retain that seat. Okay. That is very reassuring. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, may I call on um, Honorable Kende Shogunle 
to ask his question, sir. Okay, so, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Doctor uh, Comrade uh, Ron Femi, for the, the, the yeah, Thank about. you very much. Uh, I quite, quite appreciate your um, coming for this um, interaction and also the, the for the depth of information you've given us on the past and the, the present and probably the, and the future of Labour Party. And it's quite reassuring that uh, somebody like you is at the, the top echelon of the Labour Party. It gives us a lot of uh, joy that we can relate with somebody with perspective and somebody that is very core on the ideology of the uh, Labour Party. Because that is, uh, is there actually the ideology that attracted uh, people like us to seek uh, for a mandate on, in the Labour Party. Um, the, my two, que two que questions are really truthful, but they can be connected to the topic of this discussion, what the role of institutions. And how, what can we do to INEC? Or what can the party, or what can we advocate to INEC? Because when you have situations where you see what I call political rascality at play, not only after the election, before the election, during the election, and even after the election, you see INEC is supposed to be not just be conducting elections, but regulating politics or political behavior. It's a commission. CBN will not um, just sit down and bankers will be acting just anyhow. And banks will just be acting anyhow. There's a, there a role that they need to have to regulate so that they can regulate the behavior and activities of both political parties and even politicians. So that the kind of aberration we are seeing in the political firmament today they can be curtailed it's so embarrassing, the kind of behavior that some of the people, not only in our party, but, but more now prevalent in, our, in the party now, uh, who, are, who have had uh, who held what I call responsible positions and how they have actually been acting anti-democracy. Um, they, they, they move, they, are in the, they claim to be in one party, and then they are working, in a, even after they've been expelled, nothing can be done uh, to them, really, because they uh, they manipulate the laws, manipulate judgments, and all of that. I think somewhere along the line, some form of um, some form of pressure and advocacy should be put to INEC itself to say that to create the, that democracy, that uh, confidence in democracy that people actually want, so that the uh, people, political, political uh, actors, who need to act more responsibly um, than they are acting now. That is one. The other part is also on the party itself. Um, you mentioned the issue of um, the process. As much as possible to, um, I, I agree with you, and I think that uh, we need to see, the, these processes need to be, particularly at this time, we need what I call off-season time, off-election season time, that people understand the processes of the party. A lot of us got into the party with a lot of enthusiasm, thinking that, think that people are responsible to do what they have to do. But along the line, things begin to emerge that shows that there are no clear court processes uh, that um, will guide the nomination and election and all of that. And those are the kind of things they've used to frustrate people like us. They're even using to frustrate people that uh, even have uh, won elections. So something as simple as a member's register. Uh, uh, people's, not, uh, people's name not in the member's register, particularly due to default in the, or some issues on the registration process. So how can, at what point and uh, at what level should some controls in the process be put in place uh, what can is that is always at the national level? What can the local level do to ensure that uh, effective processes are put in place for uh, party members in the political party and that, that will guarantee that uh, whatever they expect in the party they will get? I think those are the two things I need to mention. Now, if there are things that come to my, my mind, I will also mention later so that this interaction continues. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, with respect to INEC, what should we do to get INEC to? To sit up. Uh, first and foremost, the recruiting uh, process, the recruiting process into INEC is a problem in itself. Uh, the incumbent government uh, has an advantage of recruiting whoever they want into the leadership of INEC because this is a leadership issue. And uh, there's the need for us to begin to put pressure uh, to adjust the legal framework that have been put in place for INEC as an institution. Uh, 
maybe in the next uh, uh, electoral act, we should begin to work towards ensuring that political parties are represented at the, at the level of INEC. If we have uh, 10 political parties that you can call political parties, those 10 political parties should constitute the INEC. They should be the one to constitute the INEC in conjunction with the judiciary. Representative of each of these political parties should be the one to constitute the INEC. And uh, uh, with uh, uh, the right uh, uh, legal framework for them to, uh, to work on, you agree with me that whatever is in the book will be, will be strictly adhered to. It's not as if we don't have all these uh, uh, functions uh, documented in the INEC uh, books. They are there, but uh, they, won't, they won't just use them. INEC has the responsibility of regulating uh, political party, even prosecuting people who, uh, who uh, uh, violate the, the rules. They have the power to, to prosecute them and imprison them. But they won't do it. Like I said, how many people have they prosecuted for electoral violence, electoral fraud, and all of that? They haven't done any. So it is because of the recruitment, the recruitment process into uh, INEC that made it so difficult because all of them are answerable to uh, their employers, you know, the government of the day, or the government of that time, or the government of today. For the government of tomorrow, they have no, they have no contribution to the recruitment process. So if they have contribution to the recruitment process, and uh, a member, a top member of a Labour Party can be a commissioner, a top member of a, a APC can be a commissioner, a top member of a PDP can be a commissioner, and you have 10 commissioners who are representative of political parties. And I think at that point, uh, at least you will see five political parties that, or seven out of 10 political parties that are that agree on the particular subject matter, and it becomes easier for us. Yes, how do we get a, a business process? How do we get it? Uh, yes, if, we require, if it requires getting consultant to do it, it's not something we just do by word of mouth. It's a scientific process that requires a lot of research and documentation. Uh, if, we, if it requires getting a consultant, we can personally, uh, I, I have an idea, I don't want to call myself an expert in the area of a uh, business process. Okay, we can, we can, we can, if it is uh, agreed upon, we can put this in place. And once we have a business uh, process being documented, I mean documented, we can then now use it to train all our members to understand how things are done within the system. And uh, it will help our administration very, very, very well. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Um, can we have Comrade Uluatife uh, Olayemi? He also raised his hands to ask his question. Thank you. All right. Uh, good evening, everybody. Good evening, Your Excellency. Good evening, the National uh, Secretary of the Party. Yeah, my question this evening is uh, what is the effort of the National Party of Civil Party doing? In making sure that we have credible people at the state level manning the affairs of the party. Because I believe the party is, the political party is all about structure from top down and from up uh, from ground up. So it is the true approach to make sure that they know in, 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 that we have a, a proper solid structure. So I want to know what the national Party, uh, the National Sec uh, Secretary of the Party is doing to make sure that we have credible people at each level you know, of the party in the state. Thank you. Okay. Uh, democracy is about the is about the people, and uh, nobody will determine that for you. Uh, politics is is a uh, is grassroots base. Are, are we together? Yes, yes, sir, yes, sir. yes. Politics is grassroots 
base is grassroots oriented. And therefore, from the world level, you choose your leaders. From what level to local government, you choose your, you choose your representatives. And from local government to, uh, to state, you choose your representative. Nobody will do that for you. It is you and you that will do it. And uh, yes, uh, the, the, the procedure to follow uh, will also be uh, so clearly stated uh, in the business process that we're talking about, apart from the constitution. We have our constitution and very soon we'll be going for Congress. And once we are prepared for Congress, the whole thing will start from the world level. Uh, when that time comes, uh, you have to organize. Like I said, we organize and organize and organize. Yeah, when you organize yeah. and you have 100 people in a particular world and you needed uh, only 10 people to be their representative there, those 100 people will give you quality people. And from the world, you can now organize them into local government. If you have 10, 10 people who are representing the people in the world and you put them together to go and elect in their state, I mean, in their local government, they will give you, give you from among themselves credible people. And on and on and on like that until we get to the last level, which is the National uh, NWC, National Working Committee. So um, I think uh, that is the, the, the most probable way uh, through which we can uh, increase our uh, our structure, can build our structure and make it solid. And in any case, uh, I want to also make this clarification that people just believe that uh, uh, they can just be nominated or elected and the, the purpose for which they have been elected or nominated is to go and look for money. I will advise very strongly, whoever you are putting, even at what level, let that person be somebody of good financial standing. Somebody who will not just, for a, a partisan, you know, sell his conscience. At the various, various world level, let's start from that point to local government to state level. Don't just bring somebody who is looking for what to grab. Okay, if you, if I may ask you, the Arab and B of this world that we are talking about, what type of business is he into? What kind of job is he doing? You know, uh, we should stop this idea of uh, politics is a profession. Politics can never be a profession. Anywhere in the world, you don't see politics being a profession. You have your own profession. Politics is a service. I mean, politics is a service, a different service, a voluntary service for that matter. You know, but a lot of us have seen politics as a means of survival. You are a welder, you know, you can no longer do welding work. You know you are very lazy, you don't want to do the welding work. You carry your agbada and you say you want to go and, go and join politics and you are fomenting trouble there. You went to school, your school was not good enough, you couldn't get a very good job. And therefore, because you can blow one little little grammar, you went and you went, you went and joined politics and you tie creating problems all over the place. Those are not the kind of people we should put in, we should put in our various positions. Otherwise, uh, our problem will just continue. I pray that uh, we get uh, we get to the end of this our problem very, very quickly. I think Thank I'm you very much. Thank you very much indeed. You. That, was, so much. that was a very that was a very strong one. Uh, until now, a lot of persons will the would never question it when you ask people what is your profession. Even those who are not elected uh, into political offices, they'll call themselves, I'm a politician. What's your... <laughs> a, point of, a point of correction. A point of correction or clarification. The, yes, the, if you don't have a job, that does not make you useless in politics. Yes, you may, not, you may be unemployed and you are in politics, but somebody who is employed can raise you up and get you a job. So that you don't rely on politics as a means of survival. That is the point I'm making. For instance, you have a degree in sociology and you are in politics and you don't have a job. And I have a classroom work for you somewhere. Won't I call you to go and be doing that classroom work while we continue to do our politics? Yeah, I will use my own as an example. I have a college of education. Both of the people working in that college of education are politicians who are graduates. Even the one that is not a graduate that uh, had the OND, I make sure I engage him in one way or the other. 
because the job is there. I would rather give it to my own political party members. And if you, if you, if I've engaged you long before now, and you are not uh, interested in my political uh, agenda, and you are following other political party, I will ask them to put you in one place and uh, gradually replace you with somebody who is ready to follow my political agenda. So if we are, if all of us begin to do like that in our various places of work, in our businesses and all of that, it will enhance, it will further enlarge our scope. That is the point I'm making. But uh, not people who are completely useless to themselves. They don't want to work. There are some people who don't want to work. They don't want cheap money. And they engage blast, uh, blackmail as instrument of getting money. That is what has happened to the like of Arab and Bianco. They are not ready to carry out the, even the one that is a legal, uh, legal advisor is not ready to go and carry his wig and do proper legal work. Doesn't want to go to court. That is why the, most of the cases in the, we had in court as a result of, uh, you know, uh, uh, the challenges we have during the, the nomination forms and all of that, I mean, nomination of, and the primaries of our candidates. They were not ready to go to court. Some of them are so lazy. So we don't need lazy people in politics. We want hardworking people in politics. People who can go extra mile. The like of Obasanjo, you know, when Obasanjo was president of this country, he doesn't sleep. Some people were wondering, how, when does this man sleep? You take a, a document of 100 pages to him, you will see his uh, red biro, I mean, green biro, crossing everywhere. Which, which shows that this man read through and through. Not the type of president we used to have who will say, are you sure what is there is true? And they will say it's true. Say Allah, say Allah, say Allah. But light a lie. It's true, it's true. It will sign and put the country into a mess as we have it today. So politics is not for lazy people. It's for serious-minded people. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, I think uh, uh, shedding more light on that, you know, gives us a full understanding of what you're referring to. In this just concluded elections, we had a couple of persons within the state that showed such disposition, you know, and uh, like every obedient in the state and every Labour Party member in the state have now concluded, we have eyes on them. And we already know that this set of people cannot, uh, you know, cannot lead us. Uh, while, um, okay, we have another question. I think this will be the last before we move on to another level of the conversation. Mr. Yobam, you are, you are, you're welcome back. Okay, we have somebody else raised their hands. Mr. Obert, uh, please ask your question. Okay, yeah, thank you very much for the opportunity. And uh, I really appreciate our uh, guest speaker, the person of uh, Dr. Pestus, for that uh, exposition. And I appreciate your answers to questions, which are, are the issues that are facing us here in the Labour Party, both in the state and nationally. Okay, I have two questions, all right? Um, the first question is, um, is arising from the last point you just made, you know, the need to make sure that we have educated people in the party people that are uh, not just educated they are they, they have something doing okay and uh so uh, my question i want to ask how do we attract these kind of people because so far so good it seems these people are not really interested in politics it is the riffraffs and the illiterates that seem to be interested in politics and recently we have been calling for people to you know, register to join the party and, you know, for people of um, a pedigree, pastors, people that have influence you know, to join the party at various wards and uh, in their various local governments. But it seems the response from the so-called educated and people that have hand work, they is not very impressive. All right. It seems I think they're just waiting for election time so that they can come and, and, and you know, show what they can do. And then after elections, during the off election season, what, is this, what strategy can the party all over the country, what can we use to, what strategy can we use to attract this set of people? That's one. Number two, the, okay, I want to answer that one first. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, all right. Yeah, it's not about being educated. It's about being serious-minded. Somebody yeah. who, has a, who has his own ambition of working with his own hand in one way or the other, whether as an artisan or as a technocrat, professional, you have you have your own worldview that centers around 
productivity. It's a different ball game if you don't have the job, but you can you are ready to do the job. Such class of people are the people that can lead or that can participate effectively without creating too much problem for us. Uh, meanwhile, it's not as if those who are lay about too don't have their own uh, uh, what do you call it now nuisance value. Yes, you identify them and you place them where they belong. Don't give them serious responsibility. You can give them functions like uh, going out there to go and mobilize and all of that. They want to get paid, you pay them. We cannot remove them. Come. But when we are talking about the real structure of the party in terms of leadership structure, as much as possible, we should bring in quality people. Now, how do we get these quality people, as we have rightly asked? Um, we have we are Labour Party, and that means by by our name, we are workers, whether as artis, as artisan, as a mechanic, bricklayer, name it. And we have they have union, whether the or unrecognized union. Then we have the labor centers. What we should do at our various level is to make sure that this group of uh, people are integrated in the system. For instance, I am deputy national chairman and I represent TUC at the national level. We have a TUC political commission in the 36 states of the federation, including FCT. Now, we, you have to, we, at the national level, we have to work with the NSCTUC to activate this center, to work, to activate this center at the various state level, to work with the state ESCO in ensuring that uh, membership cut across all this group of people. And at the same time, you do, uh, you do the same thing at the various local government level. You know, if we are able to come together, train ourselves, let our people believe in what we are doing. Let them know what uh, what is in it in this our ideology, and they are indoctrinated into this ideology. I am telling you, uh, by the time we will be having the 2027 election, it will be 70 percent victory for uh, Labour Party, and the remaining party will carry 30 percent. I can assure you of that. So it's not just at your level alone. It's also going to be at our own level. That is why we need to re, re, we, we need to retool. We need to retool our ourselves for the next uh, for the next uh, agenda. Wow, fantastic! Okay, thank you very much. Sir. I think that's uh, something that uh, um, all of us need to be reminded of. You know, the fact that NLC and TUC and Labour Party. So I think we just need to do more to draft out a plan to make sure that all of them are in it. Okay, my second question, sir, is uh, it's just um, from your answer. It's uh, um, how does it, what plan does the party have to train to reorientate the people, these people that are coming to join the party? Because you, you talked about the need to make sure that any political office holder, both the um, the people like the ward chairman, the state chairman, and all the people that occupy all the offices in the Labour Party, and even the contestant, there's need to make sure that everyone is trained. Even people that want to join the party. So does the national, do you, do you have a plan for um, uh, um, training, for orientation, to make sure that people are educated in the ideology of the party so that they will not um, cause so much nuisance in the future? Okay. Yes. Uh, during the, the last meeting of NWC, with uh, Peter being uh, in attendance, um, we, this matter was raised, and we, have, uh, we are preparing a deliberate program for that and uh, uh we need to create a department for that uh within the party and uh, i think what we'll do is to do a train the trainer program uh, where uh, the state will nominate one one person uh, i'm just i'm just drumming what i have in my kit now it has not it's not yet it's not yet out it has not been approved i've not even submitted it but that is what i'm working on uh where the one one person will be selected from each state as uh, trainers, then we train these trainers, and they will now go back to their respective states, and also train another set of trainers who will now in turn go to all the local government and begin to train them. 
perfect. Uh, perfect. Thank you very much. I believe we have uh, yeah, yeah, exhausted. Yes. I'm yeah, satisfied. The question. Yeah, thank you very much. We want to appreciate everyone that has uh, uh, expanded the conversation through their questions. We have um, uh, a question in the chat box. Someone very concerned about the recent uh, noise that uh, the opposition made, or yeah, the opposition in conjunction with the Arabambi and the and their papa, with regards to the Imo State uh, judgment that uh, purportedly removed the national chairman, Aburi. We know that the party secretariat at the national has dispelled this, that in fact it was, um, they, they were the ones who got the blow of the heat. Could you please expand more on this? And if at all that appeal court judgment is anything to go by, how does it affect uh, the party going forward? Thank you. You see, it's like, uh, first and foremost, there's no place, I've read the judgment, there's no place where they said, uh, Arab and B, I mean, uh, Apapa is now the national chairman, and uh, Naburi is no longer the national chairman. There's no, no line, no even one word that reflect that in that judgment. Secondly, uh, is a matter between the so-called uh, papa's uh, group they deceived themselves and somebody went to court and the person that went to court defeated uh, or maybe lost to their within their own group and they now organized the call one liberal party that, like something that you know said liberal party is standing a, a trial against a, which is their own liberal party their own quasho called liberal party not our own liberal party and when we try to join, to say, no, these people, this is a Jankara, it's not Liberal Party. The court said, uh, no, we cannot come and join at this level. You know the way they get their Jankara judgment. But thank God, the candidate of Liberal Party was not party to that judgment, ab initio. And uh, uh, of course, his name is already on the INEC uh, uh, portal. And the court did not say, Remove that name and put this person's name because INEC was not uh, part of that uh, that uh, that that matter. The only one that where you the only one you find INEC has to do with uh, uh, trying to join, trying to join, uh, uh, trying to join uh, the the Labour Party candidate. And the court said, look, this matter has been done at the lower level. You don't have to join. You don't have any reason to join. You, it's not your business. So how does that affect the position of uh, our candidate himself, who, is, who was not ever part of the of the case in the first instance? So if they say, oh, this person is the person, hey, it's not the, the court did not say, go, did not give instruction to INEC to go and uh, to go and remove the name of the person because the name of the person in INEC is neither the first uh, the, the respondent or the uh, the 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 the, the, the uh, the litigant, I mean, what do you call it now? The appellant. So, uh, in that matter, there's nothing we don't have, you don't, we don't have to lose sleep at all because it has nothing to do with us. Okay. <laughs> the, 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 the INEC, I mean, the INEC recognized the leader, the NWC, whose name are with them. And oh. INEC we tell you, yes, we attended the neck of Labour Party in Asaba, and they have their report. And in that report, they made it clear the people who are who are newly who are elected. We replace the position of Arabambi. We replace the position of a legal advisor. We replace some positions, and INEC has report of that, and a certified true copy of that INEC report is in the public domain. So if Arabambi is claiming to be uh, the national public secretary of the party, he should bring his own list, I mean, his own report from INEC, certified through copy of his own INEC report, signed by INEC. The report we are talking about is not signed by, uh, by Abure or by me or by anybody, any one of us. 
duly signed by INEC, report of the neck of the Labour Party. These decisions were taken. This person was, re uh, was removed. This person was replaced. If Arabami has a copy of any of such, he should provide it. Anytime they are making noise, just tell them, go and bring your INEC report, your own INEC report, go and bring it, certified to copy, go and bring it. If you cannot bring it, don't come here. That is what you use against such people. So, as per the legal, I mean, the uh, legal battle between uh, uh, Apapa, within the Apapa's group, it's none of our business. Uh, thank you very much for, for this exposition. I'm quite sure um, they they know they no longer have a place. As a matter of fact, as far as Ogun State is concerned, they've been completely decimated. And we just have to, you know, come together and move ahead. Uh, yeah. I have a while I, okay, uh, I think I saw Ayo. Okay, while I'll just ask this question and then have Ayo take over from here. Um, Labour Party is enjoying something very, very un, you know, unusual uh, when compared to other political parties, and that has to do with the uh, obvious inundation of the party by the youths. So we have so many youths in the party. Uh, most of them, uh, you know, because, uh, came around as a result of um, a lot of support groups uh, coming around Peter Obi, and then the only political vehicle into the election is Labour Party, and then they jumped in into the party. You know, having this scenario, is there a deliberate, and I'm I'm laying emphasis on the word deliberate, because uh, I, I read I read just uh, I think it was today in in a post I can't remember now possibly on Twitter, you know how somebody like Go One became the president of 27, uh, I think Obasanjo 29. A couple of these leaders in those, you know, in those years past, you know, were leaders in their in their thirties and early thirties. But now, even the constitution stipulates that uh, the minimum year for a minister or a federal house of representative is thirty years. You know, raising the bar. You know, uh, this de depriving people who are less than thirty. Uh, from becoming, let's say, uh, you know, a House of Rep, I mean, Rep member or, or ministers, you know. So how uh, is the Labour Party deliberately, uh, uh, you know, putting in place, uh, you know, uh, structures to ensure that youths who are competent and capable take over positions of leadership in the party before we even talk about, uh, you know, political offices, Going, of course, we know that it is democracy. It is about the, the popular opinion. But is there a deliberate? Perhaps the party is saying at the next level that okay, for these positions, we want young people to occupy it in order to give the younger ones a sense of belonging in the party. Looking at what they have contributed to the party, is there a deliberate uh, inclusion inclusion mechanism at the national level? Thank you, sir. I think uh, this is uh, this should be for uh, this should be something for the very nearest future because some of these things will have to be provided for in the constitution. Otherwise, uh, if you if you do it in such a manner that okay, this group of people, this part, this position should go to the youth, apart from youth leader, uh, this position should also go to the youth and all of that. Somebody will begin to ask for the rationale behind that. But I think as we move on, uh, when we are getting closer to, or uh, yeah, when we are getting closer to our Congress, we should begin to consider amendment in our constitution to give some, uh, some, um, um, uh, some uh, advantage to to the youth, to our youth, because uh, uh, when you say they are the leaders of tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow may not even come. So they have to begin to practice the leadership now. Uh, it's unfortunate that uh, also that uh, most of our youth are not uh, reflecting uh, what, uh, they are not reflecting uh, adequately uh, what they are supposed to be doing as youth. I remember during our own time, 
um, our focus was always uh, about uh, our future through the now. Our future through the now. What am I doing now that will affect my future? Uh, but uh, uh, our youth today, most of them, want the future right now without even considering what they are doing now. And uh, uh, whereas you see some of them, also not all of them, you see some of them, you'll be wondering, how old is this? How old is so There's a lady that just became a director general of a, of a commission, 38 years old, you know? But when I, checked the, when I checked the profile of this lady, I discovered that this lady was actually loaded. But you see some people who have been made their minister as youth, you are, you are even looking for what they have been doing. You know, they are, they are not youth per se. Some of them are 40 something years old. But you want to look, you want to see what they have been doing. You can't see anything they have, they have been doing other than, you know, fraudulent and, uh, you know, uh, criminal way of making money. You won't see them clearly as having been doing serious business. We have one in uh, Kogi now who came, who came as a governor of Kogi State as one of the youngest governor in Nigeria. And uh, when you trace his, uh, when you trace it back to before he became uh, governor, you discover that he has been doing runs, runs, costly. You know, so yeah, you, without a career, without a profession, how do you really want to make yourself useful? You know, so it, it goes beyond mere hustling. However, like I said, uh, that, that's my own worldview. That is not to suggest that that is how it should be. But my own worldview is that for the youth to really make themselves useful, they must be able to prove that they can do certain things. You know, there are some youth out there that are doing wonderfully well in their chosen career. At 25, at 28, you see what these guys have done, you, you, bend, you bow for them. Those are the caliber of youth that can actually be given opportunity. It's not just getting the positions on the platter of gold that, yes, it's because I'm a youth or because I can make noise or because I can create, I can create nuisance value. Here now, everybody will be shaking. No, it should not be based on that. It should be based on what you can deliver, what you can do as youth. That is what I stand for. That is my own worldview. So uh, in Labour Party, as we move on together with the national chairman and all the NWC, we are going to be working with you. Most of these things will have to come from you. Your recommendation, you know, you have to learn to submit memo to the national secretariat so that we can look at this memo. You know, Ogun State is a highly enlightened state. You can't, uh, you can't defeat Ogun when it comes to, uh, when it comes to uh, intellectual uh, disposition. You know, get as, ma as many memo as possible of what you want done at the national level. I can assure you that the, I will make sure that the national chairman sh look at it and we work on it and you get, you get response. I hope uh, I've Thank made you. myself clear. Yes, yes, sir. You have, you have, sir. Uh, let me hand over now to Comrade Ayo Bami. Comrade Ayo, please take over. Thank you here. so much, Engineer Patrick, or Joe Duke Patrick, uh, for holding forth. Uh, it's been a very great conversation. And I must also give um, a big applause to our national deputy chairman, uh, Dr. Ayo Lauren Femi. Um, I know that before you leave tonight, you are going to uh, give, me, give me some money uh, for bearing the same name with you. And then maybe one day I will also be the national deputy chairman of Labour Party. By the grace of God. By the grace of God. <laughs> So I, I, I will be dropping my account details uh, personally okay. with you uh, so that you can encourage me to aspire to okay. be like you. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. God bless you. Why are you using account details now? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Mr. Patrick, what, the, what, what did you say? <laughs> well, no, I was saying that when you are sending your own, I also ask for my own too so that you can send it together. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Now. <laughs> what they want now, not the what, not what they want in the future through now. See our youths, it's not it's what they want now, not what they want. 
Well, mm. uh, I've just said it is 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 true now because I want the money uh, yeah, to yeah. motivate me to aspire yeah, yeah. for that other devil in the future. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Your Excellency. Uh, you know, uh, when we look back, when we look back at the journey and we see how far we have come, I, I see a whole lot of um, tenacity, uh, perseverance. Uh, in fact, uh, election day itself was hell for some of these uh, comrades. Uh, Ojo can really relate with what I'm saying when it comes to Bafemi Ode, where people were being mm. beaten in their houses. Mm. So that they don't come out to vote for Labour Party. Uh, but all pull uh, 85,000 votes uh, for the Labour Party in the presidential elections, which is, of course, uh, it was it was a miracle. And all the political gladiators ran a task from PDP and APC, and they're like, what? Where are these guys coming from? With all that we have done to them, with mm. how we have tried to cage them, where did they pull almost 100,000 votes? Mm. Ah. Don't forget that the PDP in that election, having spent so much uh, with their structure, had uh, just a little over our votes. Mm. And that was really uh, a spark. And that has mm. always convinced me that uh, with uh, the caliber of the national uh, deputy ch uh, chairman, um, His Excellency also uh, the gubernatorial candidate in the last election, indeed, we have the elders uh that we can work with to achieve this our long-term goal of being inclusive in uh, decisions that are made about us so that it is not made about us without us yeah. and uh, we are also very glad that um, a lot of us have been um, unrelenting in making sure that this dream uh, becomes a reality of course it's already a reality because in yeah. Ogun State now, Labour Party happens to be the opposition party. We just yeah. need to galvanize more together and begin to issue uh, papers, uh, 10 papers, and of course, uh, put uh, uh, the, the, the incumbent on their toes with constructive criticism and of course, policy analysis. Uh, the future is bright indeed. The future is bright. Uh, uh, let, me, uh, uh, let me cut. Let me just cut. Let me cut you, uh, 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 humbly. Uh, you see, the youth outnumber those of us who are okay. Our own age. We are already. We are fast. We are fading away. The youth are more in number. So the youth should not be asking for for a, for for position. As a matter of fact, they should de they should get it. They should claim what belongs to them. They are the owners of the party. You, you can't be 10 and we are three and you'll be begging us, those of us who are three, for position. You go for the jugular. At, I, I've just said it. From local government, I mean, from what level, uh, local government level, state level, the youth should take it up. Because they are more in number. This is about democracy. It's about number. It's a game of number. So you should no longer be complaining. But, do, you know, but uh, among yourself, prepare yourself in such a manner that uh, you are not bringing in rabble rousers. You are not bringing people who just are just coming in to come and produce nuisance value. Yes, we need those nuisance value, but you should not be at the forefront of leadership. Yes, that's what I want to add. Thank you so much, sir. Hmm. Nuisance value is incredible. These words are sinking more than we expected. And I think it's also a good motivation for us, for many of us. Uh, we, we never stop learning from uh, deliberate leaders, intentional leaders. And that is why I'm going to be inviting. I was just about inviting you uh, to give us some more admonition before we round up for, for the evening. Uh, we, know, we know our leaders in whom we can get the right words, the right motivation, the right knowledge, the right wisdom, the right understanding that can really uh, equip us to take over. And that's what will be taking me a candidate of uh, the Labour Party in the last elections. 
comrade Kerry Deshogunle. Okay, thank you very much for another opportunity. I would also like to thank um, Dr. Olorun Femi for the expositions thus far. Even a lot of uh, assurance has been given about the leadership that the uh, Labour Party is getting uh, from the top and then how uh, the expectations on all of us, all of us, even those of us that are fading away and those of us that, those of them that are emerging. Uh, the, the issue is we want a new Nigeria and we cannot do it alone. We also need a right, the right control of youth to actually hand over to. And the, the, the mantra is if it is to be, if the change we want in Nigeria is to happen, is to happen it is up to us. I'm more up to, up to the youth because it's about their future. And uh, what we're just saying is that, uh, particularly in a party like this, like a Labour Party, because this is the party that can see, that can attract the right energy, the right complement of people that really desire a good Nigeria. We have had, the, just like uh, Doctor has said, we have had the experience of the other parties. One route for eight years, uh, maybe eight years, yes, the other one now, uh, eight years plus. And we can see what they've been able to do with this democracy that we've all been talking about. But uh, we can't see that much of a difference. That Nigeria um, has actually gone down. Apart from the joy of the, of the fact that we are free, uh, can we say we are really better uh, in democracy? And uh, if Nigeria is now saying we are clamoring for a change, that change has to come through Labour Party. That change has to come, has to ride on the energy of the younger generation who feel that they have to play right a, a duty and they have a, a power to a part to play now. But it makes it, it also calls for responsibility on the side of youth. It takes for calls for action on the part of the youth. It talks for proactivity on the part of, 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 of the youth to, to stand up and be counted, to see themselves as potential leaders or even leaders on their own right, and to recognize that they also need to learn. Uh, go through a process of learning and unlearning. Uh, unlearning because um, I don't think there are, there are mentors, but there are not quite a lot of mentors and models that we've had in our leadership. So a lot of um, wrong learning has been infused. But in order to create a new Nigeria, a lot of relearning has to happen. And uh, it is uh, and the, that, that relearning in the political process, particularly in the political party, a lot of that has to happen. And I'm quite happy that uh, Dr. Lovin may, uh, mentioned capacity building as one critical aspect that uh, has to happen within the political party, credibility and capacity. The credibility in the same first sense that um, uh, we need to get into leadership, people that are capable, people that, are, that, are, that can do it, not just anybody. And uh, maybe we could be able to work out a, a filtering process to make sure that the right people actually occupy the positions right from the world level. It's not just being there. But what are you able to offer? And uh, as we are looking forward to populating uh, the, me the members and at the same time populating the leaders, we need to be looking very keen at this. And I think uh, it's part of the processes that uh, Dr. Lawrence mentioned, and that some of the things we can suggest from this angle will be a process of filtering and of uh, screening people who, asp who become leaders, both of the party and, and that are even aspiring for governance. Uh, a lot of embarrassing, embarrassing things are happening now in the polity, uh, particularly in the other political parties, when you see people who over the years have, uh, have been in leadership positions and they, can do have, they didn't even have the right uh, background to, as to aspire. I think uh, a party like ours should begin to just be, be, be aware of, the, of that, that that can happen. A lot of people will come with fake certificates, with uh, dubious backgrounds, and then they want to aspire for leadership. I think we should be able to bring that filtering mechanism into, into place. We should get to know ourselves very well so that we know that those who are pushing forward, both in the party leadership position and, um, and the, in the, in the elect electoral positions are capable and they're competent and they have the right background to, to aspire. Because it's not just uh, everybody. We may be many, the youth may be many, but how many of them are available or capable to do it? That has to uh, begin to happen. And also, the issue of uh, this capacity building, I take it very seriously because um, you cannot sell from an empty wagon. The uh, political parties are formed to, uh, to aggregate interest towards governance. And governance is not, it's not a tea party. It requires quite a lot of um, resources, apart from resources, it requires quite a lot of intellect and, um, and, and um, a lot of tenacity. So we think that uh, uh, gradually things like this should be begin to happen a lot more. People are getting, getting get more aware. A lot more 
conversations like this happen. I think that's one of the things that I commend the organizers of organizers, organizers of this uh, Canada Forum uh, on that um, we, you know, in the various platforms that we have where people communicate, what you see is a, is a lot of uh, um, brick batting, uh, uh, trading blames and all of that, not about talking uh, about the future of the party and all of that. So this kind of deliberate uh, democratic conversation should continue. And I, I encourage the Ugubalo Revolution to always uh, make sure that we do this, we invite eminent um, contributors and speakers like uh, Dr. Lauren Femi to enlighten us. And we will take one lesson home that we can that can begin to shape our worldview and our ideology about uh, how things should be done. I think by the time we have a critical begin, we have a critical mass of people who are doing things like this, who are imbibing things like this. When we begin to interact at various levels, we will begin to see a difference uh, among our own approach and the way and the uh, the, the other approach because um, what you see. People play, who come to play politics talking about that's the way politics is done. It's about deception, it's about uh, abuse, it's about uh, violence. It's about, those are the ways they would not about this kind of engagement. And I think this kind of engagement should continue. It's on this note for me, I think uh, that's, uh, that I would like to thank um, Dr. Lauren Femi very much. Uh, immediately, very we requested for this um, interaction. He obliged almost immediately without, and I, that means somebody that is very open to engagement like this. And I think we will need, we we'll always call on him and there's some other people in the Labour Party national level who are open to things like this too, for this kind of interaction, because it has been a very, very useful, fruitful, and a, a, a very good learning experience for all of us. And uh, we're even happy that we can connect so that uh, we can know the kind of vision that uh, people like him and the leadership of Liberal Party, half for Liberal Party, and then we can see how we can all work together towards building the party of our dreams and towards that we always that will then create the, the country of our dreams. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming uh, and yes. for participating in this. And I think it's been a very worthwhile time for each and every one of us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Comrade uh, Kende Shogule, and of course, thank you, the National Deputy Chairman of Labour Party, uh, Dr. Ayo Olorufemi. Um, we will, of course, uh, be rounding up. Uh, this is supposed to be two hours, and I think it's lovely that we are hitting it on the head. Um, this is 7.57. Uh, we want to appreciate all the people that have joined. But of course, before we uh, close for the day and meet again next two weeks, as agreed um, at the last meeting, we will indulge us all to uh, share this message. Um, uh, we can always demand for the um, access to the recordings of the last two meetings so that we can fill ourselves up and be up to date. Uh, it's also essential that we take this thing offline uh, tell others to join uh, in next two weeks and, of course, uh, pass this message across. I'm sure so many people have never had uh, the clarification, opportunity of the clarification on the issues of the national leadership of Labour Party. And now we heard it live and direct uh, from the Deputy National Chairman. Uh, these are the kind of opportunities that uh, uh, this platform will continue to avail us with. Uh, we we also want to thank, thank the entire team of Ballot Revolution uh, who, worked, who has worked um, to keep uh, this program up, organize it, and of course even document it for archival purposes. Um, thank you so much, co-host, uh, Engineer uh, Ojo Patrick. Engineer Ojo Patrick uh, has been the enigma um, and the youthful eyes um, in the committee of the local government chairman. Um, so we have him there. We also want to have a lot more people at, at the uh, across all the uh, 256 or thereabout uh, words uh, that we have in the state. Uh, we want to have young people leading from the world. Uh, this is where we'll draw the cutting today. I'm not sure we have any pending um, Obligations in the chat box, uh, Mr. Patrick. Do we have anything? Not at all. Uh, I think we have done justice to everything we have. Uh, appreciations are in order 
for to our guests and to everyone who has attended this particular edition of um, the program. Once again, thank you all. Thank you. Okay. So thank you very much, Sas. Thank you very, very much, much, everyone. God bless. Thank you. God bless. Yeah. Thank God bless. you. It's good night from here. Have a lovely. Evening. My name is John. We don't see any from the government to talk anything about this uh, Labour Party. What happened? Uh, Mr. Mr. John. Yeah. Did you did, were you off were you off during the meeting? Yes. Oh, that's why there were there was opportunity for people to talk, and um, probably we will have to observe you first in the next meeting. Okay. Please do do well to attend.